One of the primary claims of astrotheology is that on December 24th, the three stars in Orion's belt align with the star Sirius, and that on December 25th, they all point to the rising sun. Astrotheology claims that the Christmas story is in fact allegory for this astronomical event. They say that the three stars in Orion's belt are the three wise men, and that they're following Sirius, the star in the east, to the birth of the sun on December 25th. There are several problems with this theory, but the main one, I feel, is that this astronomical event happens nothing like the way that they are presenting here. You can verify this with a simple astronomy program. I'll provide a link in the description section of this video to some free software that you can download and find out for yourself. This image is what it would have looked like 2,000 years ago on Christmas Day in Egypt. You will first notice that there is no sign of Orion or of Sirius pointing to the sunrise as they have depicted so many times. If we take away the sunlight, you can see to the right of your screen Sirius. Orion is already on the other side of the horizon before the sun rises. This scenario happens much more like they say in different months, like almost any day in October. You can see that as the sun is just about to cross the horizon, you see the stars in Orion's belt and Sirius pointing directly to it. The same thing with almost any day in November. It looks much more like the three stars and Sirius are pointing to the rising sun. In fact, it's by December 25th that Orion is completely below the horizon before the sun rises. And to make matters worse for astrotheology, due to precession, which occurs on roughly a 1.25 degree per hundred year time scale, it would mean that 2,000 years ago, Orion would have set about two hours earlier, even further before the sunrise. Some proponents of astrotheology claim that on December 24th, Sirius aligns with the three stars in Orion's belt. But the problem is, is that this never changes, not on December 24th, or not any day in the 365 days a year. In fact, that's why the ancients called planets wandering stars, is because they would move in relation to the stars that would stay the same. This idea that Sirius aligns with the three kings on December 24th just before the alignment with the sun on December 25th is misleading at best, especially considering what they're trying to prove to you. There is an attempt by the proponents of astrotheology to try very hard to make the three stars in Orion's belt equal the Magi of the Bible. They've tried all kinds of different ways. Acharya S., a very big proponent of astrotheology, even claims that early Christians call the three stars in Orion's belt the Magi, although she offers no reference for this claim. People have called them the three kings before, but you must realize that if you were to call the three stars in Orion's belt the three kings, it would have absolutely nothing to do with the Bible. For one reason, that there are not three kings in the Christmas story, but wise men, quite different than kings. In addition, there are not three of them. The wise men are not numbered in the Bible, contrary to what most people think. There is also a lot of deception by omission in this story. For example, they would never cite why the star led the wise men first to King Herod and then to the birthplace of Jesus. There's no place for those details in this model, and so they simply don't tell you about it. Moving on. We'll turn to the movie Zeitgeist to explain the general concepts of astrotheology about these two following astronomical claims. From the summer solstice to the winter solstice, the days become shorter and colder. And from the perspective of the northern hemisphere, the sun appears to move south and get smaller and more scarce. The shortening of the days and the expiration of the crops when approaching the winter solstice symbolize the process of death to the ancients. It was the death of the sun. And by December 22nd, the sun's demise was fully realized, makes it to its lowest point in the sky. Here a curious thing occurs. The sun stops moving south, at least perceivably, for three days. And during this three-day pause, the sun resides in the vicinity of the Southern Cross, or Crux, constellation. And after this time, on December 25th, the sun moves one degree, this time north, foreshadowing longer days, warmth, and spring. And thus it was said, the sun died on the cross, was dead for three days, only to be resurrected or born again. 
This is a series of provable lies. You can download any astronomy program and find this out for yourself. You can go back to 0 AD, or any time really, and find that when the sun rises, it is nowhere near the Southern Cross. And the idea that the sun rises in the Southern Cross constellation at that time or any time is absolutely ridiculous. The Southern Cross is perpendicular to the Earth's rotation and orbit, so this will never happen. In addition, if the sun ever rose in the constellation of the Southern Cross, it would be a zodiac sign. That's how they came up with them. And there's a few more problems. I'll read now from a website called Preventing Truth Decay. Dr. Noel Swerdlow is a professor of astronomy and astrophysics at the University of Chicago. Dr. Swerdlow specialized in the study of the practice of astronomy in antiquity through the 17th century. Dr. Swerdlow writes the following. The stars of the Southern Cross are just visible above the southern horizon in Alexandria and in Jerusalem in antiquity, although I don't think it is visible there now. The constellation was, however, not recognized in antiquity. Why wasn't the Southern Cross constellation recognized in antiquity? Dr. Swerdlow explains. That crux, the Southern Cross, was not recognized as a separate constellation in antiquity, probably because, as seen from the Mediterranean, it is low on the southern horizon, and is surrounded on all three sides by the stars of Centaurus, which is a large, prominent constellation. And the four bright stars of the crux are included as the stars of Centaurus. So its recognition had to wait until the southern voyages of the 16th century. I would also like to point out that it was the Romans that invented crucifixion. So if the ancients were pointing to a cross in the sky as some sort of symbol of death, it suggests they somehow were anticipating the Roman invention that would happen much, much later. On the point of the sun staying almost fixed for three days on the 22nd, 23rd, and 24th of December, I'll read from badastronomy.com. Although the sun does hang out to the south at winter solstice, it does not hang for just three days. You could pick four or more days and not notice much change. However, if three days was preferred for some reason, then it wouldn't be the days they claim, 22nd, 23rd, and 24th. Since the solstice is on the 22nd at 6 a.m., then it would be the 21st, 22nd, and 23rd as the most southern three days. This is a good opportunity to try to explain what's going on here. Because if you understand the concept I'm about to say, then a lot of this is going to all of a sudden make sense to you. First, you have to understand that sun worship has been around for a long time. But usually, it's not exactly them worshiping the sun, but something that the sun represents. Now, you have to understand that those people took over Christianity 400 years after trying to completely destroy it. Rome, all of a sudden, had a change of heart and then became Christianity, or rather, this monster that said that they were Christianity. And they chose a date for the birthday of Jesus. And the date that they chose was chosen because of its connection to the sun. They did other things, too. This is also when you start to find depictions of Jesus with halos and other obvious references to the zodiac and sun worship. You have to understand that this stuff doesn't prove that Jesus was a sun god. It only proves that sun worshippers were paying artists to depict Jesus more to their liking. There's a lot more to talk about about this astrotheology, but we'll save that for other parts. But I do want to say this. There's not a clear definition. Um, I know that Acharya S. on a recent movie has alluded to the fact that the reason that there's no Wikipedia entry for astrotheology is because of censorship, because it's somehow the theology no one wants you to know about. Well, I'll suggest that the reason that there's no Wikipedia entry is because there's no information on it. I, I, I would think that the Wikipedia entry would go something like this. Astrotheology is a term that Jordan Maxwell came up with out of absolutely nowhere, and Michael Tessarian started selling books and DVDs and $75 I Love Astrotheology t-shirts. I'll leave you with this. The main cheerleaders for astrotheology always tell us to do our homework. Yet, they're telling us lies that could only work if we're completely ignorant to the facts. So I just wanted to point out that this can all be stopped by us becoming more informed. Stop being walked all over by the mystery schools and told what to think and told who to hate. It's not up to them to tell you who to hate. They're using two-bit 
half-assed lies to do so, stand up and say you're not going to take this anymore.